All right, my man, state your name and let them know you on Nicavelli TV. My name is Ronnie Green, a.k.a. Captain Rock. I'm on Nicavello TV. Well, it's Nicavelli, but we, we know what you mean. That's right. Let's get it right. Let's get it right. All right, it's all good, man. Nick fan? Yes, sir. Okay, since when? Since... I was a kid. <laughs> okay. So Always we... been a Knicks fan. I've been in basketball all my life. I've been in basketball. Okay, so who's your favorite player on the Knicks, man? My favorite player on the Knicks was Walt Clyde Frazier. What you liked about his game, OJ? His game, he was smooth, didn't never argue with the refs, never argue with his players. He came and played and took it to you. Uh, now, do you remember the walls he had with Earl of Pearl Monroe? I don't remember the walls they had, but I knew it was some friction. Well, Earl the Pearl came from the Washington Bullets. Right. And he used to right. face Clyde Frazier. Right. Talk to me about them games. Remember them games? Who got the best or who? I think Frazier got the best. Frazier got the best because he was more composed. You know, Pearl would just come down and try to do his thing and come right back at Walt Frazier. You know what I'm saying? And Frazier was just smooth. Smooth, back him down, then turn around and shoot that fadeaway jumper. Mmm. And that was it. Mmm. And then once Earl came to the Knicks, they got the championship together. They got the championship together. I don't know if they got along together well or whatever else because you never see them, you know, on the court, no commodity. You know what I'm saying? But it had to be some commodity because they took the chip. Okay. Now, can you elaborate on a player such as Dick Barnett? Dick Barnett was, was an awesome player, man. Awesome player. He shoot that jumper and put his knee up, and put his knee up, and shoot that jumper. He was a good player. Not on defense, but a good offensive player. So he wasn't very great on the defensive end? On the defensive end, no. Okay. But Neither was Clyde. Really? But they were good offensive players. You know what I'm saying? Great offensive players. Not good offensive players. Great offensive players. And they played D. They held their man and everything else, but they weren't great defensive players. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, speaking of Clyde, because some say when they won against Will Chamberlain, they beat the Lakers, 73 around there. Mm -hmm. They gave the MVP to Willis Reed. And he only had but four points coming limping out the locker room. What's your perspective on that, man? He deserved it. Talk he to me. He played on one leg. On one leg. You know what I'm saying? And he had a hell of a defensive game. That day, that day he had a hell of, hell of a defensive game. You know what I'm saying? He didn't score too many points. But he was on the board. I, what did he have? 20-something boards? That's crazy on one knee. Mm. So he deserved it. He deserved it. So you ain't feel no type of way that they didn't give it to uh, your boy Frazier? No. No. Willis Reed deserved it. On one knee, came out, the, came out limping. And remember, he got hurt that game. Went in the locker room, and everybody was saying, oh, he's done, he's done, he's done. And came back out limping. And still went and got all those boys. Hmm. Okay now. Okay. My man Cassie Russell. Is you a fan of his game? Yeah, I like the Cassie. He wasn't a great defensive player. You know what I'm saying? But assist wise, unbelievable. Unbelievable. If you had this much on your player, he was giving it to you. Wow. He was giving it to you. And the coach back then was Rose Holzman. I don't know too much about Rose Holzman. I don't know too much about him. No? No. All right, we're going to mix it up a little. We're going to go up to date. Patrick Ewing. We all know that he held the Knicks on his back. What, for what, 14, 15 seasons? Being a Knickerbocker, something, something like John that? John Thompson, Georgetown. If you came from Georgetown... You a player, because John Thompson once was one of one of the best college coaches ever, along with Luke Conasecca. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. John Thompson was one of the best. He put that towel across his shoulder, 
and walk up and down the sideline. Okay. He was one of the best. All right, so that explains why Patrick Ewing That's was so phenomenal with his shit. And John was a center. He was a center. So he taught Patrick everything he knew. Was you disappointed that he came short as far as getting the city of New York a championship, man? Do you think Pat let New Yorkers down, man? No. The Knicks let New Yorkers down. Elaborate. The Knicks let them down. Elaborate. When Pat Riley was there, Pat Riley was the greatest coach, I think the greatest NBA coach ever. Ever. Over Phil Jackson? No. <laughs> ah, but go ahead, man. Go ahead. You're a funny dude. The boy. second coach. All the right, man. Best coach ever. All right, okay. Pat was the best. Okay. Was well, is it, 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 well, he's the second all around because Hoseman is the only coach that got the Knicks a ring. But Pat Riley was the was the second best Nick coach. Hey, you rate him as the second best NBA coach of all time. That's what you're telling the me? Best. Explain to me, man. The best. Pat Riley was a perfectionist. You know what I'm saying? He took a team that the year before he got there, they hadn't won many games. What did they win, 19 games? I think they won 19 games. And Pat came in and turned that program around. Turned the program around with his style of play. You know what I'm saying? Getting the ball, pushing it up the court, running. If he was in a half court set, he dropped it inside to Patrick Ewing and let Pat do his dance. You know what I'm saying? And let Patrick Ewing do his dance. Well, once again, was you that excited when your man Patrick Ewing didn't dunk the ball but finger roll? I was very disappointed. Very disappointed. He was supposed to throw that, that jam down. I don't know what he was thinking. You know, you know what it was? When he turned around towards the basket, I think he thought someone was there and nobody was there. I don't know. I know some say he had a hamstring. Sore hamstring, which is have a sore hamstring. which is why he didn't dunk the ball. He did have a sore hamstring, but still, you don't miss no 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 shots th that close to the basket. You know what I'm saying? You don't miss nothing like that that close to the basket. All right, moving right along. My man John Starks, man, went from packing groceries, man, trying out for the Knicks and making it. Was you a style of his game? Was you a fan? I liked the John, but he was a head case. Why you say that? John was ahead. Everybody said Because it. when you say he's a head case, when you think of the Knicks and players that was a head case, the first thing that come to mind is J.R. Smith untying shoelaces at the foul line. Oh, I never looked at that. I looked at John Starks as an emotional player, but not he so much off. of a head he case. Talk to me about John Starks being a head case. John was a head case because he didn't. Did you ever see Oakley come up to him and push him? Okay, I remember something and tell, like And tell him to give him, you know, give up the ball, everything else. You know, Pat Riley would call sex, and John would just go for his. Right. John would go for his, man. John cost us a championship. Why, because of the 3 for 18? When he shot that ball, and he was supposed to give it up. It was a set play at a half court. They took it out at half court. And John came and shot the ball, and he was supposed to give it up. And Oak went and pushed him. Damn. Damn. Oak went and pushed him right in his chest, man. Like to say, what the are you doing? Are you a fan of John Starks? You don't like his game? I'm a fan of John Starks. Was you there when the dunk took place at the Garden? Unbelievable. Who did he dunk on, Unbelievable. man? Unbelievable. Because it's always it controversy. It was Chicago. Yes. They were playing Chicago. Now. Did Michael Scottie Jordan? Pippen. Scotty Pippen. He dunked on Scotty. He didn't dunk on Jordan? No. Jordan was a little well, uh, ways away. Well, what if I told you that if you was to check the post out with John Starks coming down the lane on the left, that you see Scotty, Jordan, and Horace Grant? Some say he dunked on Horace Grant. You telling me he dunked on Scotty Pippen? He dunked on Scotty. There's others who, who said he dunked on Michael Joy. Is it safe to say he dunked on all three and the city of Chicago need to get over it? Yeah, because they Simple. were all around the basket. All right, come on. Let's just call it for what they it is, man. They were all around the basket. 
They were all around the basket, so he dunked on all of them. All right, man. He dunked on all of them. Now, he dunked on all of them. The garden was rocking. Crazy. Crazy. The garden was crazy. 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 I'm going to push it right along, man. Basketball season starts today, preseason. Knicks play the Washington Wizards, man. We got players like Kevin Knox. Familiar with him? Mm -hmm. Mitchell Robinson. Mm -hmm. Like these two players I just mentioned? Yeah, they're good. They're good. They have a lot of growth. They have to produce a lot of growth. Right. But they're going to be all right. No. Let me switch that up. They got to go out there and prove themselves that they can play. You know what I'm saying? Okay. They got to go out there and prove themselves, man. This is the NBA. This ain't college no more, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Dudes is up in you, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you got to play defense. Right. You got to play defense. It's the NBA. If now, you don't play, you don't get no money. Now, key word you said, defense. We got a guard by the name of Frank Nilakino. Mm hmm French kid. Mm hmm He's not great on offense, man. He averages like five points a game as a point guard. Mm -hmm. he catches a lot I'm of familiar. slack. I'm familiar. He catches a lot of slack because people need him to be more aggressive. Mm -hmm. But he's phenomenal on the defensive end. Mm -hmm. Do we keep him or do we ship him out? Keep him. Keep him. Why? Keep him because he's a great defensive player. Defense wins basketball games. Defense, not offense. Defense wins basketball games. If you can stop them and you score, you'll be all right. Defense, always remember this. Defense wins ball games. Defense. Defense. So basically you're saying the Knicks would be crazy to let Frank Nilakina go. Yeah, they'd be crazy to let him go. Don't let him go, man. Don't let him go. He's a guy that will run into a table, run into a wall. You understand what I'm saying? You need those type of guys. Okay. Okay. And last but not least, man, Dennis Smith Jr. Familiar mm -hmm. with him? I'm familiar. You said keep Frank. What do we do with Dennis Smith Jr.? Do we start Dennis Smith Jr., sit Frank Nilakina to the second unit where he can play off the bench, or vice versa? Have Dennis Smith Jr. play off the bench and let Frank Nilakina start? That's what I would do. What would you do? Start Frank. Start Frank? Yeah, start Frank. Because you need that spark plug coming off the bench. You understand what I'm saying? Frank can shoot, man. Frank can shoot, man. Frank will knock the lights out if you let him go. Now, what game have you been watching for you to say that Frank can shoot, man? I watched him in, I watched, I watched him in college. I forget what school he went to. What school did he go to? I don't even know. I should know that. Forgive me. I should but he played out in France. Right. So I ain't follow Frank. But before he went to France... I forget. But you saying sit him out. You just let Frank start and let Dennis Smith Jr. sit on the yeah, bench? come off the bench. Because you need that firepower coming off the bench. Okay. Frank can, Frank can shoot, man. Frank can and why shoot. he averages five points per game, man? Because they, they weren't giving him the ball. They wasn't giving him the rock. But when he had the rock, he'd dish it out. He was timid. He was timid. See, in the NBA, sometimes it takes people two or three years to get more adjusted. You understand what I'm saying? They're in a new atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? New players. These players, come on, man. These NBA players, are, you got guards 6'5", that will come out and get in your jock. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's well, a whole new thing. One more. Okay. Okay. One more. And, I and last but not least, all right, you got to go. My man Carmelo Anthony. He can't find home, a home to play for. I thought the Knicks was going to acquire him. Where it's would you over. like to see Carmelo Anthony's career end? It's over. It's over. You had a great career. You know what I'm saying? Your knee is all banged up. His son, I coached his son up there at the Gauchos. Okay. When I coached with the Gauchos. His son got game. And Carmelo used to come up here. Remember, Carmelo played in King Towers tournament. Okay. I used to run the King Towers tournament. 
You ever heard of King Towers? Yeah, I heard. The best tournament ever. I ran that. I started that. Maybe a second to ruckus, but okay. No, no. We were number one, dog. Games will start at 6. At 4.30, you'll see nothing but pillows out there. None My man, are you aware that people used to sit up in the trees, in climb the trees? trees, to watch Rucker? Come on, man. Stop no, no. it. No, no. But we ain't going to get into that, no, man. Hold on. One you more thing I want to say. Go ahead. Remember in King Towers, they was on the roofs. Okay. You remember that? All right, yeah. They was on the roofs. Yeah, I Tower. wasn't there, but I got OGs who told me about on the roofs of King Towers. Okay. All right, Rucker was all that, but they couldn't mess with King Towers back in the days when I ran. Mm-mm. But tell me about Mellow Sun. Mellow Sun is good. He's a tall kid. He's a tall kid. He can play. He can play. I ref a couple of his games. He's up there at the Gauchos. Mellow Sun can play. And you know what, what amazes me? His father's at all the games. Mellow, right? If he did, if, if, if doing, if, when it was during Nick's season, if he had a game, he wasn't there. But his father's at all the games. And coaching him. Give up the ball. Go to the hole. You know what I'm saying? Making noise, man. That's what's up. Making noise, man. His son, listen, his son can play. I forget what school his son is at, but he's killing him. He's in high school now, and he's killing him. That's what's up, man. All right? And last but not least, last Kevin one. Durant and Kyrie Irving. They didn't come to the Knicks. They came to the Brooklyn Nets. Do you think Kevin Durant's scared to play for the Knicks? I don't know why he made that move, man. Didn't come to the Knicks, man. I don't know why both of them didn't come to the Knicks. You Could it be because they scared? More exposure, more everything else. But I think it was a it was a managerial thing. You know what I'm saying? They got more money with the Nets. The Knicks wasn't offering them the money that the Nets was offering. And you know, our people, we're going to go where the money is. I hear that, man. So it is what it is. And with that being said, man, I want to thank the OG for coming on Nickavelli TV, y'all. Once again, preseason is here. The New York Knicks play the Washington Wizards tonight at 7. Nickavelli going to be watching. Y'all make sure y'all watch, too. And we out. Peace.